Hello there, faithful listener. You've tuned in to season seven of the Bible Explained podcast. So make sure to grab your cup of coffee because today we are going to be discussing the book of 2 Samuel. Hello and good morning, faithful listeners, and welcome to the first episode of 2 Samuel. Today's going to be a great conversation about David learning that Saul had died. Is David going to be excited about this? Is he going to be sad about this? What is going to happen in today's episode? So stay tuned. We're going to be talking about it. We're going to be reading 2 Samuel chapter 1, verses 1 through 16 today. And as I always do, I'll be reading out the W.E.B. version of the Bible. That is the World English Bible. For those of you who don't know what that means, the World English Bible is the version I always read out of because it is public domain. And that's right. Yes, most of the Bible versions that you read are actually not in the public domain. I'd have to get permission in order to use those particular versions of the Bible and I could get copyright struck. That is why I used the W.E.B. version, because it was purposefully created to be a public domain version of the Bible. But anyway, guys, go ahead and grab the version of the Bible that you prefer and also your cup of coffee or a cup of tea this morning. And let's read the first chapter of Second Samuel 1 through 16. After the death of Saul, when David had returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, and David had stayed two days in Ziklag, on the third day, behold, a man came out of the camp from Saul with his clothes torn and earth on his head. When he came to David, he fell to the earth and showed respect. David said to him, Where do you come from? He said to him, I have escaped out of the camp of Israel. David said to him, How did it go? Please tell me. He answered, The people have fled from the battle, and many of the people also have fallen and are dead. Saul and Jonathan, his son, are dead also. David said to the young man who told him, How do you know that Saul and Jonathan, his son, are dead? The young man who told him said, As I happened by chance on Mount Gilboa, behold, Saul was leaning on his spear, and behold, the chariots and the horsemen followed close behind him. When he looked behind him, he saw me and called to me. I answered, Here I am. He said to me, Who are you? And I answered him, I am an Amalekite. He said to me, Please stand beside me and kill me, for anguish has taken hold of me because my life lingers in me. So I stood beside him and killed him, because I was sure that he could not live after he had fallen. I took the crown that was on his head and the bracelet that was on his arm and have brought them here to my Lord. Then David took hold on his clothes and tore them. And all the men who were with him did likewise. They mourned, wept, and fasted until evening for Saul and for Jonathan his son and for the people of Yahweh and for the house of Israel because they had fallen by the sword. David said to the young man who told him, Where are you from? He answered, I am the son of a foreigner, an Amalekite. David said to him, Why were you not afraid to stretch out your hand to destroy Yahweh's anointed? David called one of the young men and said, Go near and cut him down. He struck him so that he died. David said to him, Your blood be on your head, for your mouth has testified against you, saying, I have slain Yahweh's anointed. So this is immediately following the death of Saul. And as you can see, first and second Samuel don't really have a break in between the two books. And that's because they were one book at one point and ended up getting broken up into two books. So the first chapter of second Samuel really starts out directly after first Samuel ends. So it says that after the death of Saul, when David had returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites and David had stayed two days in Ziklag, on the third day, behold, a man came out of the camp from Saul and his clothes were torn and he had earth on his head. So David had just gone to battle against the Amalekites because if you guys remember what happened there, David came back from trying to fight the battle with the Philistines. And when he came back home to Ziklag, the entire city was burned and everybody was gone. Like all the women and the children were led away as slaves by the Amalekites. So David tracked down the Amalekites and killed almost all of them and actually retrieved every single person safely from the Amalekites. Like nobody had died in that entire situation except for the Amalekites. So David had been home for two days after that battle in Ziklag when all of a sudden this, this man came to David and his clothes were all torn and he looked all dirty. And then when he sees David, he showed respect to David. So David says to him, where did you come from? And he said to him, I have escaped out of the camp of Israel. So of course this piques 
David's interest, right? Because now David is back on the right track with God. He was no longer trying to fight a battle against Israel. And on top of that, he actually sent gifts to the Israelites. If you guys remember that, when he had come home from the battle with the Amalekites, he actually received a lot of of plunder from what the Amalekites had taken from everybody else. And so David received all his plunder and actually sent a lot of it to Israel. So of course, when this young man says that he was just in a battle, David's interest is piqued. So he says, how did it go? Please tell me. So the man says, the people have fled from the battle and many of the people also have fallen and are dead. Saul and Jonathan, his son are dead also. And I can imagine that Amalekite is probably thinking that David would be very happy to hear this news because don't forget David's reputation in the Philistine region. David was considered to be a traitor. Even though David actually was not a traitor, David was considered to be one because everybody knew that he was running from King Saul. And also people thought that David was like slaughtering the Israelites because David was lying and saying that he was actually doing that, even though he was not actually doing that. But everybody thought that David was a traitor. So, of course, this this man, this Amalekite, is going to think, oh, David's going to be super happy when he hears about the fall of the Israelites and the fall of Saul and Jonathan. So David says to the man, the young man who told him, how do you know that Saul and Jonathan, his son, are dead? Now, of course, don't forget about David's relationship with Jonathan. Like they were best friends. And so David was not going to be happy hearing that Jonathan was dead. But of course, this young man doesn't know that. So he says, as I happened by chance on Mount Gilboa, behold, Saul was leaning on a spear and behold, the chariots and the horsemen followed close behind him. When he looked behind him, he saw me and called to me. I answered and I said, here I am. And he said to me, who are you? And I answered him, I'm an Amalekite. He said to me, please stand beside me and kill me for anguish has taken hold of me because my life lingers in me. So I stood beside him and I killed him because I was sure that he could not live after he had fallen. I took the crown that was on his head and the bracelet that was on his arm and have brought them here to my Lord. So the Amalekite thinks that David is going to be very happy to hear this. But was this the truth? Did this Amalekite actually kill Saul? Well, it could have been the truth. If this Amalekite had seen Saul after Saul fell on his sword and for some reason Saul still hadn't died and maybe Saul saw the Amalekite and was like, hey, come in and finish me through because I'm going to die because even though I fell on my sword, I have not died yet. It could have been maybe the Amalekite was not lying here and he really did kill Saul. But the reason why I think that it's kind of fishy And most likely that this is a lie is for two reasons. If you go back to 1 Samuel 31 and read the account of Saul taking his life, here's what it says. Saul took his own sword and fell on it. When the armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he too fell on the sword and died with him. This does not sound like Saul was alive for very long during this battle because the armor bearer saw that Saul was dead very quickly and also died right alongside him. And it says specifically that Saul was dead. So Saul most likely took his own life with the sword. So that's the first reason I think that the Amalekite story is kind of fishy. The second reason I think it's kind of fishy is because of what the Amalekite himself says in verse six, as I happened by chance on Mount Gilboa. (laughs) So he's like, I just happened to be there on Mount Gilboa when I saw all of this taking place. So here's what I personally think. I think that the Amalekite was lying to try to get a reward from David because he happened to be there by chance. Most likely this Amalekite was not fighting directly in the battle. He could have been watching what was going on. And then when he saw all the slain, he took that as an opportunity for himself to go and loot the bodies. And he happened to see Saul and Jonathan and all of Saul's sons as well. And when he saw Saul lying there, he took the crown off of Saul's head is what it said. And also the bracelet that was on his arm to bring them to David. He, he saw this as the perfect opportunity to gain some brownie points with David. And notice if you go back once again to 1 Samuel 31 after Saul dies, 
it actually says, you know, the Philistines, when they found Saul's body, they did not find a crown and they did not find a bracelet on Saul's body. So, yeah, that's personally what I think happened here. That that makes the most sense to me. But the Amalekite, anyway, brings the crown and the bracelet of Saul's to David. And he says, I have brought these things as a gift here to my Lord. But David, he does not find this news exciting at all. He is distraught. He takes hold of his own clothes and he tears them. Now, that was a common way to show mourning back in these days to show deep sorrow was you would rip your own clothes in distress. So David does this and all the men who are with David also did the same thing. And you might be like, well, why was David so sad over Saul dying? Well, there's many reasons for this. It says that they mourned, wept, and fasted until evening for Saul, for Jonathan, and for the people of Yahweh, and for the house of Israel, because they had fallen by the sword. So there was many reasons for David to be very distressed about this. Israel now no longer had a king. Israel was in a very vulnerable position. Their king was gone, not to mention Jonathan, his best friend, was gone. And Saul, his father-in-law, Maybe David really did have affection for Saul. It kind of seems like he did throughout some of his life because David loved Saul at the very beginning. And uh, Saul actually even loved David at the very beginning as well. So there could have been some affection for Saul in David's heart as well. So David was sad for Saul. David was sad for Jonathan. And he was sad for this terrible battle that took place where all of the Israelites had completely uh, fled from the Philistines. And then the Philistines, of course, were taking over cities and towns. And David is finding out about all of this now. So he is distressed and he is distraught and he is mourning and weeping. So he says to the young man who probably was not expecting this reaction from David, right? David, he, he probably thought David would start, you know, cheering or something like that. But David didn't do that. So he says to the young man, where are you from? And he answers, I am the son of a foreigner and a Malachite. And then David gets very angry when he hears about this. Now, why would this make David so angry that he kills this young man? Because here's what he says. He called, David called one of his own young men and he said, go near and cut him down. And he struck him so that he died. So David said to him, your blood be on your own head for your mouth has testified against you saying, I have slain Yahweh's anointed. David was angry about this because this Amalekite had committed an act of treason against the Israelites by killing the king and leaving Israel in a very vulnerable position. Not to mention, don't forget that David had just gone to war against the Amalekites and there could have been some residual anger there for that, but I don't want to I don't want to specifically say that because scripture does not say that, but just a thought. So there could have been some of that going on as well. But I think mainly David was angry that this Amalekite left Israel in a vulnerable position and committed an act of treason. And also killing kings all throughout history has been very common. I mean, if you look at the Roman Empire, (laughs) it seemed like. Caesars were constantly getting betrayed and killed left and right so that the next Caesar could, you know, take power. But God didn't want that for Israel. And David, who is a man after God's own heart, recognized this, that that was not for Israel to just kill their kings left and right. So David was setting a premise for Israel moving forward that there isn't going to be all this bloodshed with the anointed kings. That is not how Israel was supposed to react. So David ended up killing this young man, this young Amalekite for most likely his lie of killing Saul. But of course, I always like to bring this forward to today. What can we learn from this portion of scripture? David even though he should have had so much resentment toward Saul, and even David's men should have had resentment toward Saul, 
David did not have that resentment because David respected the leadership of Saul. And sometimes God puts people in our lives who we have to just learn to respect in spite of the fact that they treat us very terribly. It could be our bosses. It could be our parents. It could be our family members. It could be the, the president of the United States. We are supposed to respect people in authority, regardless of the fact that they are mistreating us. We are to respect them. And David took this to another level, this respect. He refused to have resentment for Saul. Instead, he chose to believe that God would work everything out. And I think also David knew that it was God's place to kill King Saul. It was not anybody else's place to do that. And I think David also was angry for that reason as well, because it says in scripture that vengeance is the Lord's. It is not anybody else's. Well, this was a good start to 2 Samuel, a new chapter of the Bible. I hope you guys liked this and that uh, you share it on your social media platforms. And I told you guys that exclusive content was coming to Kofi, for those of you who are members over on Kofi. And uh, the first episode is going up today. It's a conversation I had with my sister. It's about an hour and 15 minutes-ish long, where we discussed worship music. We discussed Bethel Church. We discussed Jeff Goldblum. (laughs) And just a handful of other topics as well. And it was a really great conversation. So that is up on Ko-fi for those of you who are members. And if you are interested in becoming a member on Ko-fi, check out the link listed in the description of this episode. Faithful listeners, have a fantastic rest of your day. I will see you all tomorrow bright and early for another episode from the Book of Romans. Happy listening and God bless.